Right, good morning. Uh, welcome to Free Work Doors. Me, Dylan. Him, Tom. Him, John. And him, Nobby. Slam fish, Isle of Wight. Uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, flounder fishing today, which is, I've been really looking forward to. I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I think we all are, to be honest. Uh, it's sunny, it's pretty cold, uh, and we're fishing on the river. So I'm loving it. Uh, total worm baits, and I think Nobby said he might have some crab legs, some peeler crab legs, some green shore crabs. So uh, I've filmed a little bit of fishing on the way down. I will show you that now. I'm going to get set up. And then we'll bring you back, go through the rigs. We might get one, we might not, but it's gonna be nice anyway, so hopefully we will. And it'll be some content to show you. If not, it'll be a boring blank, but never mind. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. There we go, we're pretty much ready to go. It's absolutely stunning down here. All right, so I've fished down here once before, basically directly opposite. So we're right by Vesters, we come down via Island Harbour. It's a really easy walk, it's not very far at all. You can see where loads of people have been digging. So there's obviously some rag down here. Tom's down there, pretty much set up, ready to go. So I need to get some bait on these hooks, but I'll quickly show you the rigs. I'm using different rods, I'm using Nobby's rods actually because they're 12.6, we don't need anything massive down here. Like I say, we're only fishing for flatties, we might get some school bass. Uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. But I'll quickly show you the rigs, and then I can get some worm on and get them cast out. Right, so just as I was saying a minute ago, I'm borrowing a couple of um, Nobby's rods, because I've got 14 foots, or 13 nines really, uh, and these are 12.6, so they're slightly shorter. Uh, they're the Bonsai Lights, Tronics Pros. Uh, I've no idea on sort of price range. How much are these, Nobby? Yeah, about 150 quid each. About 150 pounds each. So it's sort of low to mid, mid, I would say. I mean, a lot of people will say 300 pounds mid, but I personally, for my budget, I would say 300 pounds high-end rod. Uh, uh, yeah, so they're, and they're, they're, they're quite tippy. They're three to five ounce, so they should be perfect. I'm only using three ounce leads on these today. So a little plain three ounce lead same sort of thing you'd use for for mackerel fishing uh, and then basically so on one side I've I've made up a load of Wessex rigs last night so oh you can't even see there we go so this is this is a running so essentially it's a running ledger on the bottom and I put just this is basically because this is all I've got at home so it's got a sequin either side bunch of beads that is a floaty bead now I've seen some mixed comments and results some people say put a floaty bead because although a flounder is a bottom feeding fish their eyes are on the top of their head and if the worm is say going to float maybe you know three or four inches off it could result in a fish um i've got size threes believe it or not on there if you can actually see that anyway so it's a size three long shank aberdeen and you can see there i've offset the hook hopefully to enable me to get another hookup uh, and on the top one 
I've got blue and whites. Um, the whites are actually a cheap necklace I found in the charity shop because they didn't have any white beads in the tackle shop. So they're actually fake pearls, uh, which can only, I don't know, add something maybe. Same hook, uh, little stop bead there. And I've actually put that one on a boom. So that top, top snood that is normally on a Wessex rig, uh, I've actually put on a boom. These beads are quite heavy. So this one is probably gonna sit right on the bottom. That one may move around a little bit, which they say is only a good thing for flounder fishing. Uh, other side is a complete running ledger. Um, it's got some trident tackle on. I made this around Nobbies this morning. Um, that is a running ledger and that's, um, again, we got size ones, I think. So slightly bigger hook, size one or maybe a size two. Um, pink and whites. Uh, and that's on a running ledger. And then basically we've done a, the, uh, the blood loop snood type thing off the side there which is the first time i've done that so that was quite fun right let's get some worms on these stop waffling and get fishing right let's take these down there and uh and get fishing boys are already set their gear up down there but obviously it's a bit bit more of a nightmare because i've got this lot but i think i'm going to perch myself just down there, basically in line with the smoke that's clearly not garden waste. Set myself there and cast one out a little bit further, cast one in a bit closer. Uh, take a few little bits and bobs down with me, but leave the majority of my stuff up here, I think. And then obviously we'll move back with the tide. I think, what do you reckon? We're just pretty much on low tide now? Yeah, it's about low tide now, so we're going to fish majority of it up. I've got to go. Uh, get back for one o'clock, we're going to the cinema tonight, so, um, so that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, let's get fishing. Right, there we go. So I'm baited up. So I've got two hooks on, uh, two hooks. I've got two worms on there. One's shredded up a bit further up the line. One's baited a bit further down the line. Basically, I haven't got my bait needle. It's up up the top there, so I'll grab it in a minute. Um, yeah, so basically they've all got two, two worms on, apart from the bigger worms. It's just got a single worm on there. Uh, and that one's tipped off with a couple of legs. So let's chuck these in and hopefully get a fish. Just found a load of uh, oysters, good size, not for eating, because I wouldn't eat them out of here. Um, but they will make perfect bait. And I've done it before, I've salted them. I didn't catch anything on it, but I salted them to toughen them up a bit and they hooked on a little bit better and then bound them on. But yeah, there's definitely some oysters down here. So that's some free bait, awesome. Well, I've got to be honest, it's super, super mild today. Like, it's really nice to be out. I've been working last week and it's been Baltic. Gloves on, long johns, underlayers and all of that sort of stuff. And I've done exactly the same today, thinking it's going to be cold and it's absolutely glorious. First time I've had to wear shades for a while, which is nice. But yeah, lovely to be out. Yeah, I think I've got a crab on the left-hand side, left-hand rod. So it's very, very gentle pull-downs at the minute. I've just reeled it in a couple of feet, like the knobby was saying. You can, and I've seen it before on other channels. People pull it in like two, three feet, trying to entice the tape. But I think it's a crab. 
I imagine there's loads of food for crabs up here with all these cockles and oysters and everything. So I don't really know what a flounder bite would look like, so he's saying it's just going to be a pull down. Maybe a little slow couple of sort of pulls, so... But I'll check those, check those baits in a minute, I'm going to rig up, bait up another rig. Because I imagine if there's crabs out there, there's not going to be much worm left. Well, the water's come up a little bit already. My footprints are now actually in the water, so... I don't think it'd be too long before we're moving back up there, which would be nice because it's low, it's way more solid up there, the underfoot. I'm going to give it a quick look, give it a change. I reckon I've had some crabs on the left hand one, so I don't think there'll be any worm left. There we go. <laughs> Let's see. Tiny little shore crab. Quickly, I'll show you how I'm. Uh, baiting these up. So I've got a baiting needle. It's not a very pointed one. It's quite round because it's quite a big one. It's not brilliant for this. but So basically push it through its head, through its mouth, feed it down its body, leave a bit of tail, stick it up. I'd say I don't know if this is exactly right, the right way to bait up for flounder, but this is how I'm doing it and hopefully we'll get one. But, so I'm putting two on because we've got loads of rag. It's a really nice rag actually, it's really lively. This is from White Angling, Sean at White Angling in Sandown. So then, because I'm using quite small hooks, it's really difficult to, to thread a worm on there. And the beauty with this is, you get to, the, get to the knot where you've left a little bit of a tag end on, you just push the head over and just keep feeding it up. And there we go. We got a little bit, a dangly bit, and then that will go out. Ooh, well that sun's gone in now. It's pretty cold, and I didn't notice that the camera had stopped recording as well. It's plugged in. I have always plugged into my Dewalt battery, so it's got an external battery source, so I don't have to change batteries. I can leave it running for like six eight hours if I want to but it did switch off <laughs> which is never a good thing so I'm hoping I haven't lost too much it's all bit it's been difficult because when the sun was out there was a lot of glare so I couldn't even see it anyway really I'm just sort of looking at it and I hope it was recording I couldn't see the screen but no one's had a fish as, as of yet I think we probably must have been fishing for an hour maybe a bit more maybe maybe probably about an hour uh, I'm gonna do another bait change now uh, hopefully we can sort of entice so keep doing the little pull the line in you know pull the whole rig in like two three foot and let it sit pull it in let it sit hopefully to try and entice something to take it but it's not happening as yet we're waiting for this tide to come up all this bank you can see behind me it's all just covered in cockle shells it's an old cockle bed um, so we're hoping as the tide pushes up all the fish hopefully will move on to it to sort of feed and this is where all the people have been digging rag as well uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll get a flatty. If not, hopefully we'll get a schoolie or something, a little bass. If not, well, we've had a nice time chilling out on the beach. Or on the river. In the mud. <laughs> yeah, I think something's on that left-hand rod, but I think it's a crab again. It's getting some very small vibrations, but I think it, yeah, it's probably just a crab just pulling at the bait. I was just about to bring it in, but there's obviously some bait on it, so I'll leave it out for a bit longer. Yeah, I've never ever had a flat fish, so I've been chomping to get out and have a go again. Like I said, I did have a go literally straight across there. You can see it literally right behind us. I didn't have any luck that time. 
but yeah, just be really nice just to get a little flatfish so I can say that I've had one. It used to be really good up here. Loads of people used to catch, but they did a comp. They do a comp every Christmas, and I think. Last year there was 60 people, the year before was about 90 people. It's a one rod comp, but only seven fish came out. Yeah, so, this year there was, I think, 65 people and three fish. Yeah, so it's, it's not very good. It's, the percentages is not very good. It's not in our favour, put it that way. <laughs> but they are in there, so somebody caught one, so we could catch one too. <sighs> That's nice, sir. We are now way, way, way more dry. Soup again today, nice and warm. Too hot, it's burning on the way down actually. <laughs> Maybe I should do the old, uh, go for a walk. Right, so that's me done. I'm packing up. The other boys I think are going to fish on for another hour or so, a couple of hours. No fish today, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's pretty slow, but it's still nice to get down here, uh, sit beside the river. Like I so, said, I never really do flatty fishing, and I still haven't had one, so I really would like to try and get one. Uh, so yeah, all, well, relatively packed away anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Done for me. Say bye, everyone. See you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, until the next one, take care, stay safe, and maybe see you out there. Cheers. Slippery little suckers. Just try and... <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Sorry, I didn't realise you were <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll right, mate. We can do. We can sort that out in the edit. There'll, there'll be, there'll be a cockerel on the beach.